So let's talk about secondary storage, why we sort of need it, and the different forms it takes, so the different types of secondary storage that we have. We're going to focus on the big three, um, the main sort of car categories that we have for secondary storage. But first off, why do we need it? Why do we need secondary storage? So let's have a think about this problem. Let's say, for example, you've um, finished playing a game for a day and you want to save your game for tomorrow. So you finish for today uh, and you want to pick it up tomorrow. How can you do that? Well, from the memory types that you maybe know so far, let's have a think about what we've got. We've got RAM. The problem with RAM, of course, is that it's volatile. So when the power is turned off, it loses all its memory. So we can't use that because you're going to turn your computer off. So RAM is out. What about ROM? Can we use that? Well, ROM stands for read-only memory. So we can't write to it. So that is a problem and can't be used. OK, so we can't use RAM. We can't use ROM. So therefore, we have a need for some type of non-volatile storage that you can change, that you can write to. And if you've got secondary storage, that means you can come back to your game the next day, load up the save game, it'll still be there, uh, and everything's grand, okay? So that's why we need it. And there are three main types that we uh, that this comes in these days. We've got magnetic, we've got optical, and we've got solid state. Let's cover all three. An example of a magnetic um, type of secondary storage is a hard disk drive. So that thing that whirs in your computer makes lots of clicking noises, that is a hard disk drive. Um, it's got magnetic plates in it, it lets you store data onto it, so there's a bit of metal in it which will either be charged magnetically or not charged, uh, and that will be either a one or a zero, because this all has to eventually uh, come up as binary. Optical then, so example for that would be a Blu-ray or a DVD or a CD, depending on how old you are, who's most most likely being going to be one of those things that you remember. You know it's optical. You think of this word optics. It's all about light, like you go to an optician's, yeah? And if you have a look at the bottom of a CD or a DVD, you'll see that reflects light. And that's how the whole system works. Like There's a disc that spins round. There's a laser that's shone on the underside uh, of, uh, of the disc, and then it will either reflect, in which case it's a one, or it'll bounce off, in which case it's a zero. So that's sort of how that works at a high level. Solid state is probably the newest, or certainly... Uh, it's become a lot more popular more recently, I, I should say. Um, and these are solid state drives and USB sticks. They are the most likely uh, forms of solid state that you have encountered. And these are very different. And we're going to talk about uh, sort of these in a moment. But the key thing and the key thing to remember about solid state, and this is going to come up very often, is that there are no moving parts to it. OK, because a lot of the advantages of solid state really come from this. No moving parts that we're going to talk about. A magnetic disk, the disk spins. So you've got like a little magnetic plate which is whirling around 1,000 times a second. Optical, DVD and stuff like that, yeah, that definitely spins as well. But a solid state drive does not spin. And there's just, yeah, like I said, a lot of advantages come from that. Okay, so, so there are some characteristics which we can definitely put against each of these things. So optical, um, so magnetic, optical or solid state. So what are the characteristics that we, we know about for each of these? Well, first off, magnetic secondary storage is always slow, okay? So it's slow to access data. Just be particular, you've got to be very sort of particular about how to describe that. You have this and we're saying it's slow to access data. However, they do tend to be cheap. And that is one huge advantage, especially when you're looking at backing up lots of different data. And they are very high capacity, so they can store a lot of data. And that is true pretty much for all magnetic secondary storage devices. Optical uh, secondary storage devices tend to be very portable. Because they are fairly small, um, that means that they can be moved from place to place, distributed through one well, of those boxes that you get your films in, which can easily be posted and moved around the country by mail very easily. So very portable, that's one big advantage for optical secondary storage. But just like magnetic um, hard disks, they are slow. Uh, to access data because they have those moving parts and because the disk needs to spin. That takes an age for a computer. So that's something to bear in mind. Um, solid state drives, however, they tend to be fast, fast to access data. But their capacity is sort of de de determined by what sort of uh, type of solid state we're dealing with. So if we're dealing with a USB stick, kind of usually a small capacity. If we're dealing with a solid state drive, that's usually a high capacity. But one thing that we can say is that this is usually the most expensive form um, of secondary storage. 
certainly cost per megabyte tends to be higher, or gigabyte I should say these days, tends to be higher um, than either optical or magnetic. So there's some characteristics to start with. We'll talk about um, these in a little bit more detail when we get to the separate video about all the different types of uh, secondary storage devices that we have, but there's some things to start out with.